Good morning, folks. Hi. Hey, Tara. Hey, Maria. Hi. Are you smiling? Hi. Uh, Derek said he was going to be a couple of minutes late, and we're waiting for Niaz to kick off the agenda. Uh, let me post the agenda and the notes. Great, there's Niaz. I didn't get the agenda out till this morning. So total fail on me. So I expect others will watch online if uh, as they grab the time for the other things that were scheduled. So um, we'll give another minute or two uh, and then we'll let folks, we'll let me ask kick it off. Um, Oh, Jesse, sorry, auto issues. Okay, well, he can hear. All right, good deal. We we uh, we will watch for the chat sessions for comments as well. Yeah, do you want to kick it off? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I can give some brief updates. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Okay, um, so uh, on the key management side, um, we published, uh, we had a pull request for specs a while back. Um, we've been working on refining those specs based on the feedback that was provided and um, added in some architecture diagrams. Uh, I'll be publishing uh, another round of the uh, uh, close to final specs uh, this Wednesday. Uh, I'll post an update on the Slack channel once it's out. Um, that's something we plan on reviewing this Friday and closing out uh, any opening issues. Uh, this should give us a spec to kind of work backwards from for the design. Uh, in addition, uh, there are a couple of docs that I plan on presenting uh, next Monday. Uh, one of them is to look at the different approaches for uh, certificate authorities. Uh, we've had some conversations around whether we want to use GPG signing, whether we want to use X509 certificates. Um, this one is something that uh, we feel should be discussed with a larger audience to decide what's the path forward there. Uh, and then the other doc um, looks more into trust or distribution. Uh, one of the things that we've come out across in like with Notary, the initial one, since you had a signature repository, uh, you didn't really need to think about how to configure keys. Um, here uh, right now, um, you know, the initial design uh, for the signing management relies on a manual mechanism. Um, we think there's a potential here to morph the notary repository into a trust repository um, that uh, can be uh, hosted by individual publishers, could be hosted by repositories. There's a few different options we can take there, but um, we want to put together a doc for uh, a larger uh, discussion uh, with the wider group. Sweet. Um, and there was a comment a couple weeks ago. We, uh, Shiwei does have a PR for an idea um, for what we were thinking about with Tough in registries. It was really, a, I wouldn't say it's a complete idea. It was really just a capture of the state where he was as we did the split. So it'll be great to kind of make some more progress and then we'll hopefully be able to come back um, shortly and kind of converge some of those things. Any other questions for key management? Marina, you're the one that pops to mind the most here. Yeah, I think I need to read over the latest version to fully form questions. I'll, I'll try and make the meeting on Friday and, and come with those. Okay, great. And Derek, perfect timing. 
Uh, he has just finished up key management. I was going to talk about some of the stuff we've been talking about with uh, the distribution stuff. So uh, let me share my screen. Um, yeah, that one. So as mentioned um, for a couple weeks now, we've been active on how to persist signatures in a registry. Um, as we've made progress on what uh, the prototype one for signatures could be, and we talked about how we'll defer and, and look at uh, the update framework um, as a second wave as we work out some of the other issues of it. The thing that we've been spending the last couple of weeks on is how do we actually uh, persist, discover, and pull uh, signatures in a registry. And this has been tied up in the things we've been looking at with uh, artifacts, OCI artifacts, and how we store additional things in a registry besides images. And we, uh, to, to kind of summarize it, when we first were proposing this, it was kind of anarchy, if you will, not anarchy, what is it, her 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 heresy? Uh, and we've been able to make, more, so we really made for sure we took advantage of what was already in place and not making any you know, impactful changes. In fact, the spec says you can um, store additional types in this media config, for instance. So we made good progress. We've seen a bunch of you know, uh, other implementations uh, happening with that approach. And there was one that was sitting out there for a while with CNAB on collections that we've been struggling with. And we kind of deferred it a bit until we had more thoughts about it. The more we've been talking about signatures as something I want to store in a registry that is obviously referencing uh, another artifact, an image or a Helm chart or other things, it's teased up a couple of things that while we assumed we were just going to put a way to define uh, index to have a type, it's kind of asked the questions, what exactly are we thinking about with these collections? Um, and there's some interesting questions around how do I how many calls do I have to make to a registry to get the data back out? So that's the thing that we've been spending some time working on. Um, Sam, who's uh, out today for holiday, uh, Derek, um, Jesse's joined the conversation. Uh, Cormac has been a big part of that as well. Uh, and then a bunch of people behind the scenes you know, that uh, kind of feed into that information. So I wanted to kind of give a little status of where we're at and you know we can do a little more working session, but I try to capture some things um, that I think summarizes the, the questions we've been having. Let me just kind of do the PowerPointy thing because this is what I was able to scramble with this morning to kind of summarize. Um, today in a distribution, we can store these individual types, which for the most part have been container images. And then without it being in any particular order, we've talked about how we can now not talk about people are storing singularity, WASM now, Solo is the latest one that's using WASM for um, uh, uh, just drew a blank. Uh, not for actually running it as on in a browser, but actually Envoy actually, plugins, right? Let's do it. Thank Envoy. you. Um, so they can do an extensibility model with that. Uh, and then there's this interesting collection that I, we're spending more time on, whether it be Helm charts or even Terraform. We don't official have Terraform yet, but it came up in the original conversations. And whether it be an Azure Resource Manager template or a CloudFormation template and so forth. That's how we've been thinking about the individual types. And we've been thinking about these collection types um, being CNAB and signatures. Always going to get challenged on how you're thinking about it. And the more we've been thinking about it and questioning some of these, uh, especially lately with the Helm chart stuff that's been going on with this progression from Helm repos, which was the initial incubation that we did for chart museum implementation in a registry realizing that didn't scale very well. So we wanted to move to the artifact approach. It was that it was one of the initial incubuses that uh, the motivations to get things to be in a registry. And when I thought about these more, because recently we've been talking about, well, how do we deal with Helm chart dependencies, for instance? Um, it teased out some things that uh, the conversations Derek and I've been, and others, uh, just I'm seeing Derek's picture here, so it reminds me, the others I've been talking about that make me wonder a little bit more about this because these are all artifacts that need to reference something else as well. So if I think about this a little bit differently, if I've got an image, which is of course the first thing we put in a registry, 
and I want to have a collection of signatures refer, refer to it, if we think back to one of our principal requirements for artifacts is, uh, or signatures, but all of these is, I can't change, well, when something goes into registry, the thing that's awesome about it is that it, it, it's immutable by design, right? You can't change the digest, by definition, that is a solid thing. We can use tags to be a thing that we can refer to that is updatable, but the actual thing we put into a registry is absolutely you know, immutable by design. And what we've said is when somebody's doing a deployment, whether it's an image, a Helm chart or other things, we want to make sure we can honor that the thing that they reference doesn't change. Um, and the one that's the bigger problem is, of course, a digest. If I reference a tag or a digest, as it goes through the workflow, that deployment chart shouldn't have to change because I've added other information. So here I can add other signatures throughout the like workflow. So the net monitor is built by Wabbit Network. So they might, they could technically put the signature at the same time if they wanted. But as that image propagates the Docker Hub and they want to make it certified or it moves into the Acme Rockets organization and they want to put a signature on it, those are additive. So there's an interesting way of way these collection types can point to something else, but the net monitor image itself doesn't know anything about these other types. There's a directionality there. If I think about a Helm chart, it gets interesting as well, is one of the problems that we're seeing with Helm charts today is a Helm chart is treated in a registry as a chart, as just a, a, an opaque JSON object or YAML actually. Um, we actually don't have anything about that from a registry perspective that knows the Helm chart is actually referring to a couple other images. And the interesting there is it is pointing at the images. Again, the images don't know about this thing. But if we look at these two, it, well, and that would be very helpful for us to do, uh, to know. It would helps us to know for vulnerability scanning. Is this chart secure? Well, does the chart actually refer to secure images? Does the chart maybe have some configuration information that violates some policy of a particular company? So being able to express more about the types of information that's in that and how the linkage between these becomes pretty interesting. But what we see between these two is I can have a thing in a registry and it has either one-to-one, -one, so a signature can only point to one artifact. At least that's our current thinking, right? I am signing a single thing. It's, it's kind of weird for it to says it signs a collection of things with a signal signature. So that maybe that's a reasonable thing. Whereas a chart refers to multiple things. So there's an interesting ordinality there. So we I've kind of breaking this up now instead of just two, there's actually three because if I think of some of these artifacts, you know, a signature has a reference to something, Helm charts references, Terraform, ARM, and uh, AWS CloudFormation templates, right? A, 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 an Azure CloudFormation template might reference other container images, or it might reference other scripts for how it deploys the database resource, let's just say, in the, in the cloud, or where key manager, uh, key, key references are made. So I was playing a little bit more with CNEB, and to be fair, I, I was trying to do this just before this call, so we'll see how this works out. A CNAB today is des designed in a way that conforms to what registries can support. In fact, it was designed around a lot of ways <coughs> around uh, Docker Hub, which doesn't yet support additional artifact types, although it's in the works. And uh, Justin's been uh, asking people to, to vote up uh, the request for it. But the way it, it, it CNAV works today is it makes a reference to an invocation image, which is basically just a Docker image, but it could be a VM as well. And it today, you know, the Im, other images that it might reference are actually other ones in that list. So they actually use a, an OCI index. But it's kind of strange because the Helm chart itself or the other thing that they're trying to deploy, they actually stuff it in the invocation image. Um, which means that just because I update my Helm chart, I have to rebuild the invocation image as opposed to saying I have a, an invocation image that I trust, that I verified from my environment, and all I'm doing is just referencing a different chart. And that was based on, CNAB was 
being built at the same time we had started OCI artifacts. Actually, we started OCI artifacts because of we see we saw a pattern of Helm chart, CNAV, Singularity, Terraform, blah blah blah. So if I were to rethink the well, I if I if the CNAV team were to rethink it, you know what they might be able to do, assuming we could support this is a CNAV actually references the invocation image, which references the, the Helm chart, which references the images it references. So now I'm starting to see this chain of dependencies that can go through, which are no different than any package manager does for referencing its dependencies. So that's kind of, honestly, that's about as far as I got for the PowerPoint today. Um, so I'm actually just wanted to use that as the tease up to how we might think about these um, and how we do these dependency managements. Because today, a manifest knows how to reference a collection of layers and a config object. And those are just other blobs. The thing that we've been talking about is, can we leverage that infrastructure to reference other things? The last piece I'll, I'll mention and leave for discussion is the piece that we've been spending uh, that, you know, is part of this. Let me see where I captured it. Um, I think I, did I put it in here? Uh, this stuff about garbage collection. Basically, the a registry today knows how to reference collections because it needs to know those for garbage collection reasons, either eventually somebody's gonna have to delete something um, or, uh, well, the other part is when I upload in a, so the way a, a distribution works is you don't actually upload a bunch of things as one transactional boundary. You upload a blob, layer one, layer two, layer three, so now that three independent uploads of blobs, I then would upload the conf, an optional config object and then I send up this manifest that says, by the way, here's all these things that I just uploaded and how they all link together. And it's that manifest that stitches those things together. And if anything happens and the manifest doesn't get uploaded because the network went down, um, it got routed into the wrong direction, a, a machine blew up, whatever, that the registry has logic that says, hey, I haven't, after a certain amount of time, I haven't gotten any linkage to these objects. So it's going to garbage collect them and toss them. So garbage collection and maintaining those references is extremely important in a registry. And that's the approach that we took for the original uh, artifacts design was to leverage that infrastructure. Today, registries know how to upload manifests, which is uh, a config and a collection of layers, which we've argued are, are really blobs, or an index a collection of a collection of manifests or indexes that have reference. What we're really talking about here is, do I have this other thing that I can upload into a registry? And if we can do it in a uh, standard kind of way, then we can support signatures. We can support Helm charts in a better way. We can support basically any package manager uh, into that registry infrastructure. So that's that's where we've been at is the, I'll stop there. and. Derek was the most obvious one of, was part of this conversation recently. So I guess from what I was advocating for last time is I agree with the change of, of adding a collection type that is not index. Um, I was advocating more that we kind of separate that a little bit more from the image definition and maybe move it toward the artifact definition. Um, just because as people are coming in, uh, they're, they're coming to the wrong place and there's some confusion, confusion over like which manifest type they should use and whether or not these stuff that's defined under as an OCI image is really truly generic for things like Helm charts and everything else. And we know that the types are defined in a generic way, um, but they're not really documented as such, and it's 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 a, it's really confusing. Um, so I agree with that approach, and but yeah, I think if if we can separate it into the artifacts types, we can 
get away from some of the issues we've had with in with images such as like indexes referring to other indexes like some registries and some clients don't support it today uh, just because that's that's not what they expect and there's a fear that if i supported say an index point an index like where does that stop like can like how many how many levels deep should i go and fetch these these objects right. um, so there's there's been those kind of issues of uh like tr from an image perspective or an image client perspective, how do I understand a structure if you have an index that's referring to another index? So like, yeah, we have these two types that are that are fairly generic in design, the image index and the image manifest, um, but the relationship between them is not so generic today and that clients expect to handle them in a certain way. So yes, we can reuse those types, um, but then the question is like, well, what do you do when you come across that type? You just, does the, as a client just intended to be confused and throw up its, throw up its hands and, and not understand it. Um, so yeah, I, I think the adding the config to the index is a good start. Um, but I think we should further that we sh I think we should further separate that from the image definition completely, um, rather than trying to use the index. Because yeah, image image clients. I mean that that's that's the bulk of what exists today. So like I'd I'd rather almost not touch touch that part of the definition and let's define something that's that's generic. Um, the other aspect is the signatures, and honestly, I'm I'm not convinced that signatures need to be an artifact even need to be an artifact. They, they do behave differently than everything else that we've defined here. Like even the, the one to many relationship, we're talking about an object that has some mutable tag and then we have signatures which point to that object, um, but we don't necessarily have tags which point to that object. So that, that was kind of the garbage collection issue we talked about where if, we, if now we have these like dangling artifact types that are signatures and we have to treat them specially and we have to have special endpoints in the registry just to fetch them. What's the point of like, they're not really generic anyways. We might as well just have, we might as well just consider uh, having endpoints in the registry that are specific just for fetching, just for fetching the signatures. Um, and the reason I like that approach is I, I just think it's more optimal for clients to say, they have these signatures, give me these sig or put these signatures on this on this hash, and I have this hash, give me all the signatures for it, rather than like tracing down a bunch of like artifact types in order to like uh, like yeah, it's 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 a nice structure, um, but I'm I'm not sure that it, it really fits in with like that it's that a signature is really an artifact rather than a signature is metadata on an artifact. And if if we should separate the two. So at, at least that's my thinking on, on what, you, what you talked about. Yeah, I mean, the, and that's kind of what I've been teasing out in the, um, I think the question that you kind of, well, there's two parts. One, there's the untagged manifests thing. You know, there is, if it's untagged, is it, subject to garbage collection or should registries store those is one, it's a very nuance. I get it's not the main focus of what you're saying, it's, but there's definitely a nuance there because I can't think of a good scenario, not a good, it's good to judgmental. I can't think of a common scenario where the signature itself needs a tag. It really is just an additional piece of information on uh, an image or in any artifact. Um, and when I look at a repository and I want to see the stuff that's in that repository, I want to see the artifact, whether it be a Helm chart or an image, you know, a singularity. And the fact that it's signed is like this attribute that's on it. It's not really, the signature itself isn't something I want to see. I want to see that that artifact has a signature. Um, the question I'm struggling with a little bit is how much the special case any one of these because that's, that's actually how we got into this in the first place was we were special casing Helm repos in ACR. And before we could even get it done, CNAB, Singularity and others came along. Um, what 
So we decided to generalize it and we found that that was more valuable. What I'm wondering here is, that are we hitting the next plateau of that same generalization? Because I definitely don't want it to be such a, a high compute um, and network process to go get signatures. That would you know, defeat its own purpose. Um, although signing security is always supposed to be hard or it wouldn't be used secure, I guess, but I, I don't really buy into that. The thing that I'm, we've also been starting to think about this metadata services and I've had this draft that I've been starting on because if I think of a set of attributes that I also want to be able to add to a, an artifact, I wonder if this is just another one, if it fits into one of those. And the, the main piece that I'm struggling a little bit with, and this is what came up in the call last time uh, that Sam and, and Derek were pushing on this and, and Jesse as well, is if I push a thing, do I need to push, if I push a thing as a blob or whatever I, I push it as, do I push a manifest that describes the relationship or can I just say link this thing to this other thing? That was the core of what was coming up because uh, Averall, who's been implementing this for ACR, or not just ACR for Notary, but to the ACR team, was also kind of, he actually built that API to begin with, and I was kind of struggling with that. So I think that's almost the core of the question is, do we need a manifest as the way that you link things together? Or can I just say, I uploaded this blob, by the way, link it from here to there? regardless of what the thing is, whether it be a signature or something that says, by the way, this is uh, my production, you know, the, all the other metadata APIs that I can put on it. Marina, you had a comment? Oh yeah, so I was just, um, I was just thought about the, like the order of signature discovery. And I think that, um, I don't know, like, the answer, but just kind of the thought I had was, um, if you discover the like the art of the the artifact and then the signature, I think you then have to take another step backwards with with whatever key management system to discover you know who created the signature and whether or not you trust that signature. So I think you'll end up having to take that step for for every signature of the artifact if if you go in that direction rather than saying this is the person I expect, this is their signature. This is, um, you know, the artifact that was signed. Um, and I think little, there's uh, something about the overhead of all that discovery. I don't know. Yeah, no, help me with what you're, there's an ordering thing that you just mentioned. I'm trying to, like the idea is my deployment script says, this is what I'm deploying. But to your point, it can't be deployed unless it has this signature, whatever that signature is. So what, what was it that you were kind of getting at a point like, we have to know if that signature is valid, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think that um, it, might, it might just be missing a, a step in the order somewhere, but I think that, because once you find, say there's like 10 signatures on an artifact, maybe mm -hmm. there's only one or two of these that you actually need to verify, but do you have to download all 10 of them, you know, to see who signed them, whether you trust them, um, and then, you know, you know, where in the process are you downloading each of these things just to prevent, you know, downloading all 10 signatures when you only need this one or two. Um, I'm taking notes in the wrong place. Hold on, let me just put it back and actually do another hack. Yeah, I'm going Yeah, and that's exactly uh, what we were talking about um, in this ordering is because we've generalized it so much, all we know is it's a descriptor. Um, the descriptor itself doesn't even say whether it's a signature or not, much less the signature is signed by Acme Rockets versus Wabbit Networks or anything like that. So there's an interesting question around when I see a collection of something, and I'll bring back our, the actual one here. When I have a collection of signatures, how do I say that if I'm in Acme Rockets, this is this is the only signature I really care about. So don't make me download all three just to find out that yes, it does have the one I care about. And then there's a whole bunch of other checks whether that's a valid signature also. Yeah, I think that's what makes the whole idea of 
a signature as another artifact. So yeah, because then you showed that possibility of having like an artifact kind of discovery URL where you can say, hey, I have yeah. this, I have this manifest or I have this, I have this artifact, show me other artifacts that are related to it. And yeah, to yeah, to Marina's point, that gives you a bunch of stuff. You still have no idea what it is. Now you have to go and download each of those. Um, and if and and some of those you'd have to actually do two downloads to, to even get to the signature before you can like verify whether or not you need it or not. Yeah, for a minute. But this collection doesn't actually give enough information to be know it's interesting. I mean, this is an extension to what. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I guess like you you used the word attribute earlier, but I I think that's good because I I think we've done a good job defining what a artifact is. Um, but to me, I have a hard time seeing signatures fall under that definition. Um, attribute almost makes more sense there. And, you know, then it, then it could make sense to add other properties on those to do filtering if we needed to. Like, if you think about it, like, if you have a bunch of attributes, um, the the hash of the artifact is could be one of those attributes. The tag associated with it could be an attribute. The signer of it could be could be uh, some of these properties that maybe we filter on in, to even get these signatures. Um, so basically, how do I like generic way of like, of the collection of things that could be as, associated with the thing I care about. How do I get only the subset that I care about? Like, cause I, I could have lots of, I could have lots of signatures. I could have lots of metadata on it. Um, I only want the subset to come back. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think from the standpoint of, um, like the registry API, like signatures could still be treated like blobs, but maybe um, maybe just need a, a different way to actually like fetch them and stuff. Like I, I just, we, we can try to generalize it. Just, I, I think we're gonna have a hard time generalizing it as an artifact to try to treat signatures, CNAB and uh, like with the same, API just because they're inherently different things like like an are they what I think they are as we said like like signatures aren't something that are tagged signatures have kind of a reverse one to many relationship because you could have one artifact that has many signatures um, any of those signatures can go away it doesn't change anything about that artifact mm -hmm. that it's referring to and yeah, maybe there's other properties or maybe there's other um, types that are similar to that, like SBOM, for example, or some of those, um, some stuff that are signature-like, Any, mm -hmm. anything that we'd say was what, like an, something that attests to the quality of, of an artifact. Um, Does it have to attest but, to the quality of an artifact or can it just be some kind of in, you know, other information? I think the, the piece that gets very interesting, which is what the key management part would be really helpful with, is if I am told that this uh, image was released on this particular compute node, uh, you know, on Monday when it was built three months ago, you know, that information is really helpful because I may not delete it because I know it's deployed. Whether I how much I trust that information could be nothing more than it came from the registry and the registry hasn't been violated. I maybe can see what pushed it because the who is not even relevant. It's probably some CI or CD system that put that piece of metadata there. Um, as opposed to a signature, there's two parts. One is who pushed it or what pushed it to know whether it's valid. But there's also this other thing that says, well, is the key still valid? Now, whether the key's still valid part actually goes through the registry as a persistence model or there's some kind of 
key validation thing outside of it is the interesting part. Sorry, I'm, it's, you're just seeing my mind go a little journey here of like, where is the generic versus the specific thing? Like what makes a signature so much more important or different than any other additional piece of data that I want to put in the registry about a thing? Because we don't put information in the registry about a thing, we put things in the registry. Not yet. That's what this whole metadata thing. There's been so many different efforts around putting metadata in a registry and we're all doing it in a weird, not weird, we're all doing it in a way that makes sense for our clouds, but there's no generalization of it. So something I've been working on, I haven't even gotten to the point where I feel like promoting it to the main branch, but it's how do I store a set of additional information in the registry, but in a common way. So the same way when an artifact moves between Web and Networks, the Docker Hub to Acme Rockets, that the metadata can travel with it um, or from a development registry to a production registry. And I'm not trying to boil the ocean here. I'm just trying to see where, where's the right pattern. Because I do believe that signatures are important enough that the very, if we decide to come up with a unique API for that just supports signatures, that's an important enough scenario that I think the other registry operators will implement it because we all have the same need. Where Helm charts, eh, it wasn't that I'm big not deal. saying that. I don't necessarily think it has to be something that only supports signatures. Like, yeah, maybe the approach around here, um, what Serge said, seems like a, a decent search API could fix this. Like, like that's true, it could just be where we need some way to handle um, objects in the registry that like they need to be associated with something, but we need to be able to find them. And, right. and that, that's kind of what Marina was saying. It's just like, well, what do we just like go through everything and then till we find something that works? Or is there a way that we can just constrain what we're looking for? And you know, if that, if all of this metadata is a separate artifact and those like, yeah, maybe that's fine. I just, I, I think the API still looks different. Looks quite a bit different from how we normally use artifacts today. Like, that's, and I'm, when I say artifacts today, I mean like we have a tag and from a tag, we get a, a immutable hash. And then from that hash, we walk down a tree of objects that are related to it. Yeah, I would just add, those are all very good points. Thanks, thanks for raising them, both of you. Um, I would just add that sometimes you do want to, so not, not we, we also, I think a good reason for adding a new API is that we don't want to unnecessarily constrain ourselves. It's certainly possible that what we have there can actually do what we want it to do. So that's, that's but, but that's one possibility we need to consider that we might need more flexibility. So new API will give you that. But the second thing is sometimes it's conceivable, it's possible that it's a use case where you actually want to get this metadata first, whether it's a signature or whatever it is you want to associate with an artifact. You want to get the metadata first, whatever it is, whether it's uh, say, I don't know, scan results, compliance scanning results or signatures or what have you, graph yes, metadata. You want to get all of this first before you get the artifact. You don't want the artifact to tell you where to get it. So this direction might become important. Does that make sense? I, I'm not sure, I, the scenario, simple scenario has got a little confused on, but the idea that I want to go use the metadata to figure out what artifacts I want makes total sense. Like this is one of the auto purge things that we've been working on is um, as I put stuff in a registry, I want to know when to delete it. And I want to differentiate the stuff that's deployed versus the stuff that I just built and happened to put there. Um, so in that case, I'm looking for what content is supposed to get deleted today because we set these expiration dates on it, which could always be extended. So to your point is, I want to say, give me all the things that say delete, you know, TTL or uh, deletion date now, whatever. Um, and now I get a list of artifacts back. So there's this bi-directional referencing that today registries are really good and really optimal because we just have gigatons of, uh, of data that has all these references that there's this really great, you know, one way reference um, that happens. What we're really talking about here is the ability to store bi-directional references. Um, and anybody that's built anything at scale is always like, I'm not using a database that doesn't scale, which of course is 
not completely true, but it's the the challenge we all face. And every I time we the break point here though is, I think the point here though is like the the ordering. Like yeah, we, we talked about the the relationship, but yeah, if if the ordering is I have to fetch tag, and then from tag I fetch manifest, and then after manifest I fetch signature. Maybe the ordering that is ideal for a client, and I, I think it'd be great because like um, how we do things on Container D today is we have a explicit resolve step where we start with a tag, and what we get out of that tag is a digest that we trust. And it'd be nice to have an API where we can say, "Hey, registry, I have this. I have this tag, and I'm looking for a manifest, or I'm looking for a digest, an artifact that's associated with this tag." And the registry could say, here's a set of signatures that attests that this, that this tag is associated with these, uh, these artifacts. And I could verify that. And then once I verified it, I can actually fetch the, fetch the, the artifact. Um, exactly. I, I'm not exactly. a huge fan of the tag API today. I, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's, it's not really a great approach. Um, so if, if we could solve that along here, like, I mean that's that's kind of what Notary V1 was was solving a little bit, just didn't solve some of the other parts of the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of making a note here that there's actually like these three different things. There's artifacts, there's metadata, and then there's signatures. Um, with what we've been taking the approach is everything's an artifact, and it it creates strangeness that why do I have tags? for this that's really not its own artifact. It's it's metadata or it's a signature. And whether signatures become meta, special metadata is the, the question. But the, the main thing is, is this differentiation between these two, which are additional elements of the core thing. Like I don't think of a Helm chart as metadata. I don't think of singularity as a metadata. I do think of signatures and what date something's gonna be deleted as additional information I put on a thing. And, and tags too. We should we should put tags in that same category as metadata. Ooh, that's metadata. Exactly. Sometimes you want a trustworthy information, uh, right? A source of information to get the tags in the first place. Totally agree. You may not have it. That's interesting though, because tags are, tag itself is a pointer to a digest that can be updated and arguably should be blocked from being updated in certain circumstances um, until a break glass scenario is allowed. So I mean, I, not in Notary V1, but that's, that's the, well, that's that's the point. I mean, if you're using Notary V1, you don't even use the tags of the, of the registry and the, the tags are a collection of signed objects, or it's a signed collection, essentially. But the funny part is that's, that is one of the fundamental reasons why we're in Notary V2 conversations, because they were too tightly coupled. Well, they were tightly coupled yet in separate stores, which made the experience really confusing. Yeah, I mean, I think we want to unify the storage, but I don't think that the, the problem with Notary V1 is that it was signing tags. I, I mean, I think that was the review one strength. Agreed. Sorry, um, there's so many pieces. I, I was more referring to if you the the sign tag was stored somewhere else. Like I can reference that same tag, and if I didn't say I want the signed version, I get something completely different. That's kind of the part that's broken, or the the fact that the well, I guess it's not really a tag problem. The fact that the repo, the path of the repo, <clears throat> and the registry were part of that signature was also part of the problem because you couldn't do movement. OK. I mean, I guess for me, I just want to see. I, I don't think we need to, to couple these uh, this work here so tightly with like the generalization of the artifacts work. Like, I, I think that work should continue. But I it's, it's clear that we need a extension to the distribution API. And once we do that, like we're not so we're not tied to the way artifacts work today. Like we don't need to do like 
said, it's, it's kind of like a half measure. I want something that that's kind of like artifacts, but you have to use it in a completely different way. What's, what's the point? Like, what are we actually gaining from that? Like, we should be optimizing for the scenario we're designing for, which is, which is signatures basically. Like, and if we can design it in such a way where it's, it's generic, then we should do that. But we still need to like design for like the optimal mm -hmm. scenario. So the good news is that so um, overall, she way have been continuing to make some progress. There's been a couple of things they've been um, dealing with that had some that I was hoping to show more updates on um, a signature persistence and retrieval with the conversation we've been having. So the, the thing that we've been trying to do is make sure we always have a track moving forward while we're having these additional conversations. So they were actually implementing the APIs that we had in this PR, um, where, yes, this one, where it basically has the refer metadata, which we know we've got problems with or concerns with. Um, it actually is kind of halfway. It actually persists the, let me find the right storage. Yeah, so what it actually does, it actually persists the config object. Which, so it's kind of a halfway optimization. Um, but I think one, it'll allow us to test some of this and allow us to think about how we can better optimize some of these calls. Uh, so I'm hopeful by next week, we'll be able to demo this. Although next week I'm taking off or whatever that means in COVID land. Um, so we'll, if we make enough progress, I'll, di I'll dial in on Monday morning. All right, so here's, here's where I'm kind of hearing. Let's, continue to make the prototype efforts on specific around more signatures. Uh, Toddy is gonna start helping me, and he's another PM on our team. He's gonna start helping with some of the metadata API stuff. And we'll kind of treat that as almost a third prototype range to see if there's something there around some generalization APIs, but we won't stop doing signatures um, because we think there's something else. The same way we shipped the Helm repo work while we did artifacts, um, we'll consider that uh, approach here. So we can definitely get some something working and learn what we don't know uh, while we continue to iterate on what we do know. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I think the what I was suggesting after last time is we talked about having this API to read back references, um, but just the notion of having the API if you have an API that reads reference, you should have an API that kind of puts those references. Um, so like, yeah, if we can generalize that to metadata um, yeah. and use that for signatures, that, that'd that be great. Uh, that'd be great as well. Um, but yeah, I think it, it was also an interesting idea. Of, I know we don't want to, <laughs> I mean, we, you said you want to avoid boiling the ocean and like search API is definitely that, but um, we should take some of those ideas though around like how, like if we have, if we generalize the metadata, we might want to generalize the way that we actually read back that or filter that data, I guess. The search API in the end is just kind of a filter API. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that it gets more interesting when I can do a couple of parameters um, that that's where it gets even more complex, but the idea that I can do a basic filtering and ordering is pretty important, so. Um, yeah, just within a single repo. I mean, the search API, I think, was designed to be like cross repos, and uh, that's certainly out of scope for, for here, I, I think. Uh, the metadata isn't, for this it is. Like the metadata, remember that, that scenario is, I want all of the all of the artifacts that have to get deleted today. So that is, you know, a multi-repo kind of query. Signatures is not, to be completely fair. And even metadata, well, there's two parts. If I want to get the metadata for an artifact when I'm starting from the artifact, then it's obviously scoped to a repo because it's the thing and I want to know what's associated with it. What I'm doing the opposite is it's giving you all the artifacts based on this metadata. Um, that's a little different. And maybe that's a good way to separate out. Is it pronounced Serge or, or, or Sergey? I don't want to mispronounce, mispronounce the name. 
Um, just saying you can see surge. surge. Okay, perfect. Um, said could see getting signatures from different repos. Uh, I think we I think we discussed some of that early on about the notion of like kind of cross like sharing signatures across repositories. Um, the the thing about anything that's cross repository is it's has inherently different like access control models. So, I mean, I I could see having an API that's almost exactly the same across repository as it is for within repository, but I don't see them as being the same endpoint. I could see you have like a search within a repository, maybe like a global one, um, but the access control would definitely be like much different. I think. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to imply that we need to do that now. I just meant that we don't need to rule that. I don't think ruling that out is as something no one ever wants. Is is right. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but I, I guess the thing is, yeah, as we get more generic, we need to think about more possible use cases. So, I think it's, I think it's good. I, I don't know how generic we really want to get here, but. I mean, the, the reason we're having this conversation is the first place is we don't want to make saying that's just signature specific, right? I think that it kind of is the question like what the, the cross repo stuff comes up a lot. Like I do, obviously a Helm chart is a perfect example of a cross repo scenario because you're not going to put all the images in the same repo. That's kind of by definition that they're, the repos are the, um, WordPress image and the MySQL image are by definition separate repos. I wouldn't want to put those in the same repo just because of stuffing it into a Helm chart. So I think we will need to support cross repo references, um, but I, I see those references are different than metadata. And maybe that's something to put here. Is metadata uh, data on a specific object where references can must be capable of cross repo scenarios um, chart references um, wordpress i mean we have a notion of this today with the cross uh cross repo mounting um it's almost the same situation where since everything is is just a link, uh, when you go to create this type that links to something else or that points to something else, like do you want to link it locally? Like you you mentioned, like can I have a image that points to another repository or or a Helm chart that points to another repository? Maybe that's good, but what if what if you don't actually have access to that repository? Like what's what's the registry supposed to do? Or is it supposed to allow you to do that reference? So somebody pulls that Helm chart that does have access to it, and now they've kind of like a security issue to allow like cross repository like linking that you haven't proven access to. So that that's the whole idea between cross repo push is like we don't just say when you download the image, oh go get this layer from this other repository. We say when you upload this manifest, you must first do a cross repository mount to say, hey, I have access to this layer. And then that will be linked, but it will not be uploaded to your uh, to your repository. Um, no, you bring up a really good point because it's also a, the, the an object a pushing an image with a collection of layers is an immutable thing in the sense that th those don't, don't ever get dealt with separately. The fact that we have these cross repo links is an optimization thing that not all registries implement and do in different ways for various different reasons is a good reason. What we're saying here is a Helm chart or any, like, as the example, references another image. The person that uploads that Helm chart might have access and that'd be perfectly valid. Later, the ent because registries implement security at repo level, um, repo levels, you know, for because they're referencing things owned by other people, or uh, there's tighter security put within the same organization. The next entity that comes back and pulls this graph back may or may not have access to each. So, 
Um, and I understand one of the reasons behind that is like, I want to say I want to point to WordPress, but I think your example is 3.1, but you know, there's, there's also like a specific patch level that, you know, you don't want to necessarily tie it to a specific release when there may have been updates. Um, but at the registry level, like usually that level of metadata is not even considered. Like if it's pointing to, to a, a tag that the client has to go then and resolve, like the registry doesn't necessarily consider that a, a link, at least today. Oh, that's a good point. It's because today we really turn linkage straight to digest so they're hard links. What we're saying here, there's a loose link because we want to be able to support a servicing event without having to update all the Helm charts. In fact, that was a recent conversation here for CNAB or Helm where that came up is they, they are converting references directly to digests. And that I, I flagged that as a bit of a concern because it means that you literally have to update everything if a servicing event happens. But OK, um, people are starting to drop off. It's probably a good time just to bring it to a wrap uh, for this week. And uh, I, am, I am hoping to make more progress on this. This was an excellent conversation to kind of feed into that. Um, and sounds like Niels has made some good progress getting started up again. Um, so we'll continue the conversation. I do recognize a lot of these things are conversations we really should be having in distribution. You know, the OCI call is supposed to be a notary call. And for those that are trying to figure out, hey, I'm just trying to get signatures. You guys are talking about a lot of other stuff. We recognize that it's unfortunate. It's it's been the unfortunate dependency is that sometimes to build the thing, you need some other infrastructure in place to make this valid. And that's what we're trying to. Yeah, I sure. think the artifact conversation can be moved back to the regular OCI meeting at least. And the problem is if I did that, I wouldn't have anything else to talk about in this call. <laughs> so I have been struggling on saying, yep, we're still working on distribution. We'll come back. Uh, I feel bad about that. But at least there's some folks like yourselves that have been able to join. So I'll be trying to make progress where I can. Um, but we will bring it back. In fact, uh, let me check what the agenda is this week. And uh, maybe I'll queue this up again for a more conversation this week in the OCI call. So. With that, I'll thank folks for their time this week and till next time. See ya. Thanks.